So, uh, hello, my name is Dr. Ryan Flavel. Uh, I'm a historian and I'm also a Food Not Bombs veteran. Uh, I was uh, in Afghanistan in 2008 and I've sort of uh, changed how I approach the world based on that. And it's led me to uh, trying to solve problems that I hadn't otherwise planned to solve in my life. Um, but here we are. And here's the number one problem that uh, my company hopes to solve. Uh, it's that grocery store strawberries suck. Uh, who has ever uh, thrown out or composted strawberries that have gone bad in the fridge? Who amongst us? I, I have, certainly. Um, and I wouldn't even be willing to compost uh, non-organic strawberries at this point because I, uh, I I don't trust what has has or has not been sprayed on them. Um, from their shipment up from California, primarily in Mexico. Um, so I'm, I'm hoping to change that uh, and solve that problem uh, in the following way. Um, best Japanese strawberry seeds. Uh, so these are the two uh, varieties that my company is currently trialing, Sakura and Haruhi, um, which I mean, we'll have to come up with a different, less Japanese name at some point, uh, but that's okay. Right now we're just in the trialing process. Um, and, uh, our solution is to, uh, bring these genetics into the country and then to grow them in the best possible way, um, through organic growing methods. Um, does anybody know anything about the Meiji restoration in the late 19th century? Long story short, Japan was closed to the world and then was open to the world, uh, in the late 19th century, like I say. And when that happened, they, uh, got strawberries for the first time in the history of Japan. And being the Japanese, they... Uh, don't like to not master things. So uh, over the course of the last 200 years, the Japanese have been working on mastering uh, strawberries and uh, the the results are really quite astounding. Um, no, nothing like what, what we have uh, here. Uh, so here's where we're at as of a couple weeks ago. And I have a, an even better picture. Oh, wait, not that one. Sorry. Uh, that's my, that's my uh, great uh, photo op. I took my, my strawberries outside for the first time uh, in pursuance of this this one. Uh, so here's where we're at as far as build out phase. Uh, I've received financial approval uh, <laughs> for the build out phase one, which is currently complete. Uh, and here's what we're trialing. We're trialing three separate systems, uh, substrate bags, Dutch buckets are the two sort of traditional ways to grow strawberries. And then Deep Blue Greens is an Alberta company that I met when I uh, was an alternate to pit at in, pitch at InVentures two years ago. Um, and they're developing a made in Alberta uh, indoor vertical strawberry growing system, which I'm trialing out uh, at, in, the, in, in the month of May is when that's all going to be installed. Um, so the team, as far as that goes, or the growing team, uh, is at the moment myself and Brian Rusk, who's my technical advisor. I met him at the uh, Catalyst Incubator last year, um, and he has a cannabis uh, operation. Uh, he was recently uh, chosen as a finalist for the Canadian Cannabis, uh, sorry, I, I have it written down right here, the Canadian Cannabis Championship. Uh, he, you, you can, you can currently, that's the only place you can get his, his, uh, product. And the reason is, uh, he knows how to grow. Um, and he's been willing to work with us as well to teach us how to grow in the organic way, because the only way that we're going to be able to compete is, uh, by creating the best tasting product. So I wish that like, I could, I could send a smell over the internet, but obviously one can't. Um, but I mean, Brian's facility, the smell of it is like nothing that you've ever experienced in your entire life. One um, minute, Ryan. Thank you. Um, and basically, he's been happy and willing to share with my company uh, the mechanisms because we don't compete with one another, right? I'm doing strawberries, he's doing cannabis. But so far, I've discovered that uh, his expertise has been extremely useful in um, my process. Here's our partner companies. Uh, I'm, I'm still working on getting the IATC, uh, out of the university of Lethbridge, uh, to work with us. Um, the competition is here. I'm going to say one thing about the competition really quickly. And that is they don't know when to pick their strawberries because they're not ripe enough. Um, I love Dutch strawberries. They're grown in Alberta. They're really good. Uh, they're the only ones I buy, but they don't pick them right. Um, our competitive advantage I already mentioned is both our genetics and our growing methods and what we're looking for is uh, help with developing a plan. 
uh, who can get us to the next level, somebody with experience who can get us to the next level um, and funds to finance the build out phase. So thank you. All right, I'll start us off. Um, so I didn't quite get why your strawberry is better than the store bought one. Does it last longer? Like, and by how much was AB testing done to, to, to uh, acquire that data? I haven't done formal AB testing, but uh, again, it, it, it's, it's a smell thing. I mean, it's, it's kind of hard to explain without actually having the strawberry in front of you. Uh, but like, it, it's not even close. The, it's, it's the genetics, right? It's the fact that the Japanese have been working on perfecting the strawberry for 200 years and have developed a genetic strain, which we don't have access to in the Western world. Um, which it took me six months to, to get access to that contract. It took me about a uh, pretty solid six months of back and forth with the, with the company Miyoshi before I got the contract for the seeds. Um, it, I mean, it's just like, it's just better, right? Like it, it's, it's hard to explain without actually having, but yeah. You know. So what is the cost difference in production, Ryan, between a conventional strawberry and um, these Japanese strawberries? Well, so technically zero in the sense of uh, they're grown in basically the same method, although we do use slightly more expensive um, like add-ons. Um, having not grown the regular type of strawberries, I can't really answer that question with any uh, authority. I only know uh, how to grow these ones. Um, but I mean, like strawberries are strawberries. It's just that these are genetically better strawberries, right? <laughs> like, like they've been selected at a, at a different way. Basically the big difference is soft fruit and hard fruit. Um, most strawberries are hard fruit. Most strawberries that you'll buy at the store are Dutch hard fruit. Uh, these ones are soft fruit. So they're, they're softer. They smell better. They're, they're just, like I say, all around better. I mean, I think it's, uh, I mean, I'm not going to, um, question you, but I think it's curious that we have not had these, these seeds in Canada before, given that, um, you know, leading up to World War II, the Japanese were basically growing all of our strawberries in British Columbia, Washington is, State, and Oregon. Is that true? They were... I, uh, I'm fascinated were, to learn that. <laughs> yeah, Japanese strawberry farms uh, before World War II, and we shipped them all off to internment camps in interior BC were huge. Um. Uh, the, my question is like, when I think of your competition, I think of Santerra and all their yeah. fanfare of opening their, um, specifically strawberry, um, yeah. greenhouse and growing through their Santerra markets. And so that's where I would wonder. Yeah. That, that, what, so that's not just, that's what makes that, you different and special. Cause they're supposed to be amazing, even though I haven't the, eaten them and how much are your strawberries going to cost? Uh, they're going to be pretty expensive. Uh, I I'm currently, uh, Right now, my sales channels are restaurants, high-end restaurants, and I've been talking to um, uh, Cilantro and Chive. I blanked on it for a second, but that's what it's called in, in Red Deer, sort of my first outlet. Um, I'm looking at $2 a berry uh, at the moment. Um, as to your Sentara question, I think it's a great question. That That's actually what I tried to mention in the presentation as my competition. Uh, they have great strawberries, and I love them, and it's all that I buy. Um, those are the Sentara strawberries, but as I say, they're picking them too early. I, I like it's le like I want to go to them and say like, listen, if there's any white, it's too early, guys. You're doing it wrong, because like I'll get I'll, I'll go through the store and I'll be like, no, 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 right? Like and and I, again, I'm not saying they're bad strawberries. They're fantastic strawberries. I really like them, but they're Dutch. They're hard fruit, and I don't know why, but they're they're picking them when they're still like 20 percent white, right? The bricks level will increase up until the like. Uh, <sighs> I've been I'm, I'm so, sort of modeling myself on a company called Oshi, and they and their their motto, which I believe in, is not one day over and not one day under, right? And and so that's what I'm trying to accomplish with. I would say Sentara probably does it why everybody else does it, so that they can leave them on the shelves for two or three more days before they spoil. Yeah, yeah, exactly, right. <laughs> whereas whereas my business model is to get it direct to the person who's going to be serving it immediately, right? As opposed to. Um, having it sit in, in a store for two weeks because they don't that's the other thing strawberries don't ripen off the vine right they're, they're not like other fruits that'll that'll get sweeter off the vine if you pick them too early they're picked too early and that's it right but Sorry, just, We're I, gonna... know, Ron, I, yeah. one, I just want to clarify one thing Ryan. you said it costs two dollars per strawberry y yes ma'am yeah so for like a family of five it would cost ten dollars for each one to have one strawberry 
Uh, well, it's it's the 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 larger the number, like we're gonna be again. First of all, restaurants are our market uh, because that cost is then like absorbed within the cost of the of the uh, dessert that you're serving. Second of all, um, yes. <laughs> Long story short, yes. So my first question, I um, I remembered you saying that the strawberries that you have are soft as opposed mm-hmm. to the ones that are in store that are hard. Do, does a softer strawberry have a higher water content than the harder strawberry? Like, uh, is it soft because of the water content? Well, I, I don't actually know why it's soft, to be honest with you. Uh, it is a larger berry, so mm-hmm. I would expect yes. So um, the reason why I asked that, I was leading into the... Um, because the, you started off your pitch by saying that the ones in the store, they don't last long and they, they go bad in your refrigerator. Mm-hmm. I feel like your strawberries will suffer from the same thing and maybe even go bad even faster because of the high water content. Uh, well, in my in my experience, they won't go bad, bad faster. That, um, so long as they're packaged properly, which which is... So the, the, num- the way that we plan on packaging them for shipment is mason jar. Um, because strawberries keep better in mason jars. Every, the whole world uses plastic, but strawberries don't keep particularly well in plastic, uh, again, in my experience. Um, so yeah, that's that's our plan to, to address that problem. Uh, mm-hmm. They've kept fine uh, for us uh, the same amount of time. I mean, they will go bad just like any other fruit, but uh, mm-hmm. I haven't experienced uh, a higher rate of, of, uh, of it going bad, no. Okay, so have you given consideration to like your infrastructural needs? Because now I'm hearing like mason jars. So you have a need for the land space, like the, where you're going to grow it. Then you have a need for taking it to that value added um, market mm-hmm. readiness. So have you given thought to in terms of like the equity that you would need to kind of yeah, push off the ground? That's a great question. Um, I have. Uh, I have a couple of uh, people who are in, are interested in partnering with me for spaces, but I haven't. Uh, be, to be honest, I've been focused on the strawberries to this point, um, and now I'm starting to get to the point where I can start to look at the actual facility part of it. Um, mm-hmm. I, I have three, uh, I, I'd say, pretty solid leads uh, on a facility space, but yeah, that there would be a fair amount of that. That's when that's when the capital investment has to start, right? I've been able to do it pretty cheap to this point. Um, but yeah, for the next step, yeah, it'll, it'll be, um, it'll be a a much bigger proposition. Absolutely. Yes. Great. So my final question, so I don't hog this is have you uh, weighed environmental, um, like requirements? Cause I know that these are, um, like home in Japan. This would be, be this would be an indoor grow. Yeah. So, uh, again, that's why, that's why Brian's the guy that I'm like, when I met at, 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 uh, at the catalyst incubator, um, when we met, I was like, I'm looking for advice on how to set up a grow operation. And he, and he comes on and he's like, I'm, I'm looking at developing a business on how to teach people how to set up their grow operation for cheap. And, and it like, and then sort of, we've been friends kind of ever since I brought him donuts in Rocky and, and he's a great guy and he really knows what he's talking about. Um, so he's really helped me to get to the stage that I'm at right now. Uh, which is uh, how to grow indoors without it being a, a disaster. And to be honest, it's been a disaster a couple times already. Um, I got my seeds a year ago, and I, I this is I've only now finally meeting success. Um, so, uh, yeah, um, like I say, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, he, he's he's going to help me. He is helping me with the build out phase it, and it's, and it's working. What he's been telling me has been working basically. Um, so I, that, I'm really excited about that partnership between, between him and I. Thank you. Uh, I, I'm going to jump in. Sorry. I, um, you just triggered a question for me when you said that you're going to ship them in Mason jars because they preserve better in Mason jars. Yeah. Then I had a small heart attack. So, because you're saying that your strawberries are larger than normal strawberries. How yeah. many strawberries are you going to put into a mason jar? Well, see, that, jar? that's that's it, right? Like, that's the idea, is that if you get a small mason jar, you can fit four strawberries in there, and then you can ship them at $8. Four. Yeah, so now I'm thinking about, like, so you're, but, rest, you're targeting those. Well, but. The, it, you're targeting a restaurant. 
yeah, that yeah, would be even based if, on even if they've got like a specialized dessert where like each dessert gets a strawberry, but they're going to sell fifty of those desserts in a night. Uh, yeah. You need to deal with those mason jars. Yeah. Well, absolutely. To be honest, again, this is this is this is a theoretical thing. Like I I know I know the answer. My answer right now lies in mason jars. I'm not beholden to that answer. Um, I haven't figured out that part of the business yet. I, I'm absolutely interested in any ideas that anybody has that, that can help me out with that aspect of it. Um, but that's my current plan as it stands. I think um, it's really neat bringing in these Japanese strawberries. And we all know people spend and will pay, you know, tons of money for something that tastes amazing. One of the things I think it might be worth you looking at is different business models. Because perhaps it's not the like you selling it to restaurants, perhaps it's not even you growing them. Perhaps it mm -hmm. is giving selling the seeds or at home opportunities, or some of the different ways Like I'd, I'd test out a bunch of different business models to see what one the best one to go forward will be. Because this is like, we're really quickly talking about this, right? Like, we all understand you've done years of research, we we're five minutes into this. Yeah. Um, but uh, that there might be a lot of things to be able to grow and scale this and um, be able to really develop it. So just play with that, work with, are you, did you say you were down in Medicine Hat? No, I'm in Sylvan Lake myself. Sylvan Lake, uh, oh, just, so just work right with, here. yeah, perfect. So you've got the Central Alberta um, Regional Innovation Network out there. Yep. So tap into them and the resources. I can't remember what, who it is who's running the Karen Incubator right now. But uh, then Community Future should be able to give you a lot of help in, in just testing these out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I did I did an incubator with uh, Kathy Forner last year, and it, it, was, it was very successful. Um, as far as uh, different different models, as far as plants and whatnot is, are concerned, uh, I, I signed a contract. I, I'm basically just allowed to sell the fruit. Uh, hmm. it, they're pretty strict. <laughs> so, I mean, you know, you know I, I've been thinking about, like, going back to them once I've met with some success and, and reevaluating that contract. Um, but as it stands... I can just sell the fruit. I can't even. I can't even straw. I can't even run or propagate at the moment. I can only seed propagate, but that's okay. They're, they're uh, it's working pretty well so far. So. 